Hey everybody. So, welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary. I uh, haven't done a live stream in a little while, so I really wanted to hop on and get one done. So, I uh, decided to go with Spayburn tonight, and I'm planning on doing my next whole month of October on Spayburn. So, they've recently released a new version, which is the Spayburn 15, which uh, I'm not sure if they've ever done it before or not. I haven't quite done my research yet. But, um, one way or another, it's brand new. So, I'm uh, going to try to get my hands on some. They said it might not be available till about November, but we'll see. Uh, maybe I'll have to split it up a little bit. But one way or another, I've had these two bottles sitting around for quite a while, so I wanted to just kind of do my reviews on them so I can finish them off. <laughs> so, how's everybody doing out there tonight? So I got a few extra little things going on here today. I um, have been playing around with my streaming software, so I got a bit more going on. <clears throat> I'm going to wait a little bit just to get into this guy, but I wanted to give everybody a couple minutes to hop into the chat and, uh, you know, say hi. <laughs> so if you're in the chat, say hi. As far as me, I have been extremely busy lately, as per usual, um, more so. This is actually, I think I was looking through, I haven't done a live stream in over a month, and uh, I definitely want to do at least one every month. I was kind of thinking I might try to do one every other week. Um, they're just kind of fun to do, and if I really like limit it down to about an hour or so, I um, should be studying for my text exam tomorrow. Hey Drew, hey Sean, how you doing? Uh, but whiskey, yeah, no, I, I completely agree. Actually, Sean Connolly, that's a... Uh, uh, a good point. Um, so since I've got a couple extra people in here, let me know, is my mic good? Is everything looking all right? Um, you know, I still haven't quite dialed in this mic yet. I'm actually, at the moment, I'm kind of like saving up some of the money that the channel's making to actually buy these like really nice wireless microphones. And I'm, I'm pretty excited about them, but can't get them yet. The good thing about those is it comes with a set of eight, which it's funny, you can buy one, two, or eight. <laughs> and the, the two and the eight, there's really not a huge price difference between them. But that will allow me to actually do like whiskey tastings and kind of like more party kind of situations and, and live stream those or just at the very least have more people on the show. I'd love to have more people here. I actually invited a couple people from my work today. And then after inviting them, I realized that I have no way to mic them up. Um, I do have a boom mic that uh, could kind of pick up some of their voice, but it wouldn't be nearly as good as my laugh. All right. So since there's a couple more people in here at this point, wow, 11 people. That's great. Well, so welcome everybody. I'm, I'm psyched that there's that many people in here already have only been on for a couple minutes. Um, so for those of you that missed the original intro, I decided on uh, October I'm going to do my review videos on Spayburn. And you may have noticed this month that I've done a couple of extra videos on Crown Royal. And what I'm going to do from now on is my typical like intro to some sort of new whiskey distillery on, on the first uh, Friday of every month. And then the second Friday will be another offering. The third Friday will be some sort of a like informational video, like I've been doing. Like the one this month was the cleanse the palate one. And then the fourth uh, will be yet another offering. And you know, if I happen to film more than that, great. Um, maybe I'll even extend it. But what I want to do is start kind of filling out some of those playlists that you may have seen on my channel. Um, in general, a lot of them have like one video in it, you know, like think 40 Creek, right? So I did 40 Creek like two years ago and it's a playlist with one video in it. <laughs> Not great. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pour this. This is the Spayburn 10. Uh, boom, look at that. <laughs> Fancy with my graphics. Um, so the Spayburn 10 is, oh, hold on one sec. Um, Here's a question for you. I actually got a single barrel, four roses, and a Maker's Mark bottle based on your recommendation. Any tips on tasting differences in notes and all? I'm sort of having some trouble. Um, so Michael Buckwash. So uh, I guess I have some advice. So first off, if you're really going to taste them both, do it on separate nights. You know, take the time to get to know that one whiskey. Don't do them both in one night. And, you know, have like two or maybe three, uh, you know, that much. And just take the time. Now, as far as actually tasting whiskey, and it sound, uh, you kind of said that you're, you're having some trouble tasting the flavors. There's a few different tips, and yeah, I did a video on it, but I'm here with you now, and you're here with me, so pr you've probably seen it. One way or another, some stuff to try is just sit in a room, a quiet room, with 
no distractions. And just have that be all that you're doing is sipping your whiskey. And try that way. Um, there's different, you know that whole like thing, I, I think from what I understand, the whole different areas of your tongue tasting different things thing is like a farce. But I swear, like, you know, different areas of your tongue, they at the even if it's not flavors, you get different sensations. So really like let the whiskey roll over your tongue and just try it out. You know, drink plenty of water too in between sips just to kinda start from scratch. And I don't know. I mean, Makers Makers is going to be a better um, one to start with. So uh, the Four Roses is awesome, don't get me wrong. But start with the Makers as far as trying to figure something out. Um, you know, self-promotion, whatever. Watch my video after you've done some of your own tasting and see if you can pick out the stuff that I picked out. Um, even if I, you know, maybe somehow put the, the thought in your head, I assure you the stuff I tasted is, is something you should taste. So if... For example, you're like, oh, well, I don't know the difference between tasting vanilla and tasting oak, just due to lack of experience or something. Um, you know, that's something that hopefully the video will help you out on. If not, then um, I guess I could probably recommend some really oaky uh, bourbons. And then, you know, you kind of go from one, one side to the other. Like if you, for example, if you wanted to have a bourbon with like a really high corn count, um, that'll be like really sweet. And you'll think to yourself, okay, this is what corn does to a whiskey versus something with like a really hard, heavy char on it, like actually that Jack Daniel Sinatra um, Select, that one had a pretty good char on it. Like you might think that's what oak tastes like. So that would be my, my only suggestion. Um, let's see, things sound good. I'll have to make sure my sound is as good as yours during my reviews. <laughs> Thanks, Bourbon. Um, do the Kentucky Chew. What, what is the Kentucky Chew berry? Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I know what you're talking about. Didn't know it was called that. I like that. All right, so anyway, I, uh, I've been on for eight minutes and haven't had a sip yet. So let me uh, go right into this guy and, you know, just kind of sip it. So while I'm doing this, is anybody else out there actually drinking with me? Because that would be awesome. So uh, while I wait for your answers, cheers. I had forgotten that I liked this whiskey. It's funny, I, you may have picked up on this on that last video about the palette thing. I had the, the uh, row of whiskeys here, and I actually pointed at the Spayburn, kind of, and I said something like, you know, these aren't all world-class whiskeys, and I was definitely talking about these two um, over, like, the Oban or the Laphroaig, <laughs> and um, the McClellan that I have in there, too, I wasn't, I wasn't quite sure how that one stacks up. All I know is that I bought these both for, like, less than $30 a piece. I think they were, like, $25. Um, so in my mind, prior to doing any sort of review or really knowing much about it, I just assumed they weren't that great. That being said, for this live stream, I actually took the time to do a little bit of research, and um, not as much as I would normally do for a review, but um, this is actually a pretty good whiskey, and it's it's well regarded. It's actually, it's it's got some interesting flavors going on. So, um, will I be tasting the waters with whiskey, water with whiskey? I, uh, I have... Well, I'd be tasting the whiskey with water. <laughs> I do have uh, water. I totally forgot to... Hold on. Actually, let me let me just uh, reach over here for a sec. <laughs> Trying not to knock over my microphone and drive you guys nuts with the sound. Those are forks. All right. Sorry about that. Just getting a spoon. That way I can try to get a small amount of whisk, uh, water in here. Um, all right, so I will absolutely try these with water after a couple more sips. Um, my expectation is I'll probably have a couple drams of both of these, so uh, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> all right, cool. So you're doing uh, Drama Makers in Glencairn. Awesome. So, Mike, um, as you do that, I mean, it's not exactly going to be quiet if you're uh, you know sitting there listening to my voice, but... Um, you know, try to think about what it tastes like, and let me know in the chat what you what you think you're picking up, because actually this is fun for me. Um, all right, Teeling Small Batch Rum Cask Finish sounds good. I uh, haven't tried that one, so that's that's what you're drinking tonight. Where did you get that? You're on Hawaii. Nice. I'm I'm curious, Derek. Are there any Hawaiian whiskeys that I mean? There's got to be a local local whiskey distillery on the on at least one of the islands. Which island are you on? I was uh, had my honeymoon actually on. We went to Maui and we went to Oahu, which not as much of a fan of Oahu. I mean, Maui's hard to beat though. But I've I've been to Hawaii three times so far, and uh, 
I've been to Oahu twice, and I don't think I would go back. So, but that's all right, Derek. So, all right. So this is a this is a pretty nice whiskey. It's very fruity and like florally. Um, you've got, I mean, the nose the nose is definitely apple and honey. The nose is actually like thick, if you can if you can picture that. It's almost like almost like nosing a bourbon in that it's just got a, a robust aroma, but um, what you're smelling is tends to be lighter stuff. So it's kind of an interesting combo. All right, Paniolo whiskey from Maui. All right, so you're from you're from uh, Maui. That's awesome. I got out of the Dublin airport on my way back to the U.S. Uh, yeah, that's one thing that stinks about going to airports. It's, there's so many different whiskeys that are only sold in airports. Now, the funny thing is I've, I've come to learn that a lot of those are just renamed. <laughs> so it's like, you know, this is a, a bad example because it's not true, but like the Laphroaig PX, right? So like you can usually get that in a uh, airport, but like that may be the Laphroaig 18 with a combination of like some quarter cask or something like that. You know, they'll, they'll blend something or they'll mix something and uh, produce it as something else, so. Very rural, yeah, I would imagine so. Um, good diving in Maui. I uh, Actually, good diving on the Big Island as well, so I'm a scuba diver as well, and that, that was one of, the, one of the better places. I did the uh, manta ray dive off of Maui. No, sorry, off the Big Island, and uh, that was pretty awesome. A 13 foot wingspan um, manta ray, which is pretty sweet. Bayburn 10 has recently jumped in price in New York City. It was 28, now it's 35. Yeah, I mean, I think that's about what I paid for these. Like, it was probably 28. Um, I got them up in New Hampshire, uh, the New Hampshire State Liquor Store. It's pretty cheap up there. So, for those of you uh, joining, this is what I'm drinking. Um, I mostly just wanted a chance to show off my graphic a little bit. So, and play around with my software here. <laughs> um, so, uh, what did you all think of the cleansing palette video? Uh, would you like to see more of stuff like that? Or do you, I mean, I'm going to be doing uh, a definitive scotch guide, but the, the problem there is that I personally haven't tried as many scotches as I think I need to in order to make a good recommendation. So I'm doing a lot of research and asking other people who do have more experience with scotch than I do um, to help me get that list together. It was actually going to be where that, that cleansing palette video ended up being, but I didn't have it ready in time. <laughs> Don't worry about it, Tom. I'm glad you joined us. So, hmm. the one bad thing I'm finding about this is it would be it would be cool to be able to like actually see some of you while drinking together. Otherwise, I'm basically just a guy drinking a, a glass of whiskey, staring into a camera, but. Um, chat seems a little ch slower than it normally is tonight. Speaking of which, um, if you check out on the video, if you're on your phone or your like computer versus on a TV, there should be a, um, a little eye symbol, like a circle with an eye in it. And there's a poll there with um, just some, some random questions of, of different videos that you might want to see. Um, I think it's something like, you know, the definitive scotch guide or like a video on this or a video on that. So if you have an opinion, go ahead and vote on that. I'll check it out after the video. Let's see, funny story to tell. The other day was my 30th birthday and my colleagues pitched in and got me a Glenfiddich 15. My boss got me the bottle of Knob Creek maple and I accidentally dropped the Knob Creek. Well, you know, the flavored, flavored whiskey, you dropped the right one if you had to drop one. <laughs> so you dropped it in your driveway. Yeah, did you, did you then proceed to lick your driveway? <laughs> 35 bucks is dangerously close to the price of a Glen Morangi. Yeah, that's a very good point. I would, um, they're very different though. I will say that this is a very different taste than the Glen Morangi. I haven't had that recently enough to, to be more detailed in that description. The cleansing video was great and there don't seem to be other vids about it specifically. Thanks, Derek. Um, <laughs> what do you think of Four Roses Small Batch? Fantastic. Um, I was actually going to do Four Roses instead of space, uh, Spayburn um, next month, but I might do it in November instead. Um, I want to do, I think that there's there's three main ones. you got the, the Four Roses Yellow Bottle, 
um, yellow bottle. Actually, that's what they call it, yellow label. And then they've got the single barrel, and then you've got the small batch. And maybe somebody on there can correct me. I think those are the main four roses, right? Excuse me. So, what is this? Uh, don't think so. Um, this is interesting. So, uh, YouTube has this new feature on their chat where if somebody's just kind of, um, you know, posting stuff, it'll automatically hide it. Uh, that being said, I think Stephen Davidson, are you just a, a guy or, or I don't think, yeah, right. Yeah, you weren't one of those previous commenters. Um, all right, so have you had Whistle Pig? I have had Whistle Pig, uh, just not on the channel. I actually have a bottle of it sitting in my bar, and I'm waiting to do it. I have not done enough rise on this channel, but to that point, I have not done enough Japanese whiskey or enough scotch. Um, so all three of them are pretty high on my list. That being said, um, you might see the Whistle Pig before the end of the year, especially with me trying to do more, or not trying, especially with me doing more videos every month. Um, wow, 55 bucks for Glen Morangi. That's insane. All right, what state are you in? I'm in Massachusetts, Delaware recently, and whiskey was very inexpensive there, and no state tax. Yeah, that helps. So like I said, I go up to New Hampshire for no state tax. I like all of your videos. Your videos are so different from all the other streams. Very refreshing. Thank you, Tom. Actually, that's really nice. Thank you. So I recently was uh, poking around at some of the competition, and I found the Whiskey Vault, which, you know, it's kind of... In my opinion, and uh, whatever this is, they're they're doing well, but they have that other kind of style of video that you see more prevalent on YouTube with like you know jump cuts and like zooming in and stuff and just more like what you'd see on a gaming channel. Um, I could do that, but I don't know. It's not really my style. I prefer this like kind of one-on-one, -on -one, um, you know, talking with the viewer and uh, having the whiskey try to deliver more quality like information rather than making it that sounds bad but making it like super entertaining you know like i'd rather just kind of be informative with hopefully a little bit of entertainment and uh just kind of come off that way instead so oh sean you're also in massachusetts cool anywhere near julio's liquors i'm from the big island of hawaii yeah i've been there we can uh we just call it the price of paradise <laughs> nice so one thing that's weird, Derek, I, I've always found it awkward to just call it the Big Island. Um, like, I know that you could call it Kona, or part of it Kona, or something like that, but I'm just curious what the natives, like, do you just refer to it as the Big Island? Like, oh, I'm going to go over to the Big Island tonight, you know, I, I don't know, like if you're over on Maui and hopping around. Um, let's see, I'm actually a fan of good whiskey in this channel, not just some guy. <laughs> oh, sorry about that, David. Uh, Stevenson, um, sorry, Steven Davidson, um, your message automatically got, got kind of review, um, like held up because it was trying to post a video, I think. I don't know. Glen Ramsey 10 is about 37 bucks in New York City if you know where to shop. Ah, oh, shoot, I just realized I don't think I have the chat on the screen here. Um, there it is. Well, sorry for anybody watching this in the future. I'll try to be more aware of that in the future. Um, I like your style. It's very professional and great information for us. Whiskey drinkers appreciate you being real, too. Thanks. Yeah, all right, cool. Well, that's really good to hear. And obviously, I mean, if you're on the stream, you're probably one of my bigger fans. So I'm uh, really happy that you all can come out. It's very motivating to, to be on a live stream and have that people show up. <laughs> so, all right. Um, overall, let me talk a little bit more about this guy. So. Spayburn is is interesting because it's it's kind of almost like a hidden gem on the space side, you know, in the space side region, which there's so many distilleries there, right? But most of them are known because it produces really really good whiskey. Um, but as far as Spayburn goes, like I, I was actually just checking out their Twitter the other day. They only have like 200 something followers on there, which I get the maybe the the target audience isn't quite Twitter people, but still like that's pretty small, especially compared to some of the other others on there, like Glenn Morangi or. Glen Fittich. Um, that being said, they uh, they produce a really good product. Um, and as just in case this needs to be said, like they didn't give me anything, or you know, this isn't sponsored or anything. Um, I'm more just kind of a fan. So, and like I said earlier in the in the 
broadcast that I had these two bottles, and I'd kind of like to be able to finish them off sometime soon, because they're taking up valuable space in my bar. All right, so let me add a little bit of water to this. I'm just going to go a little tiny bit. Hope I didn't put too much. Well, it tames the nose a little bit. Not that it was particularly harsh at all anyway, but um, it, it I wouldn't say it does a lot for it. It doesn't really open up anything. It doesn't really open up anything new. Um, if anything, it brings out the floral uh, nose a bit better. Um, all right, let's go ahead and try it. All right, so Big Island is easier to say and distinguishes from the state. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, that is better with water. Um, you lose you lose some of the, the intricacies of the, of the flavor, though, but the, the overall flavor itself is better blended when you, when you add a tiny bit of water. Um, if you have this whiskey or ever have this whiskey, I wouldn't recommend just doing it right off the bat, as I never do. I mean, frankly, I have Booker's straight, <laughs> you know, and just because that's the way it's supposed to be. Um, but try it, you know, after you've, you've sampled it without the water. Try it with the water. I, this is definitely one that, that is different if you add water. All right, uh, let's see. New to good whiskey and to this channel, but loving it so far. How often do you live stream? Um, Spoonman, so <laughs> I, I will be the... See, I'm trying not to say try because that was a terrible statement. I tend to live stream once a month. And that is my plan going ahead. I will try to do it more than that. But what I want to do, for those that missed this, is my first month, sorry, my first week of every month is a new distillery. And that distillery kind of comes with a little bit of a longer video because I talk about the distillery rather than just the whiskey. Um, and, you know, that whiskey, just like some of the videos that I've done already, it's, it's the distillery, the whiskey, and then the nosing and the tasting. Um, then the second video of the month will be... Um, just a whiskey with the nosing and the tasting. Third video will be like an informational one, like that cleansing palette one, or the definitive um, bourbon guide, or something like that. And then um, somewhere in there, there's gonna be a live stream. So here's a question for you all, since you all showed up on a Thursday, and I'm sure that that's why I have kind of like smaller, um, it is chill filtered. Uh, that's why I have a smaller audience right now. What is this, the best day for all of you? to have somebody live stream and actually want to want to sit down and have a drink. Um, you know, Friday seems like an obvious choice, same with Saturday, and that's usually what I would choose. I just, in this one in particular, it was more that I haven't done one in a while and I really wanted to do a live stream and, and kind of get that going. So I would be totally game for just being like, you know, the third Friday of every month I live stream. So um, let me know what you think. All right, uh, let's see. It is a, it... all right, I'm going to sound dumb here. Somebody in the comments, correct me. So you've got Highland, it, this is just shows my, my lack of extreme knowledge of scotch. I just have to brush up a bit. You've got the, the Highland region and you've got the Speyside region. Are they different or are they, because I mean, this is called Speyburn and it's on the Spey River. Is it... It is Speyside. It says the classic Speyside single malt is bright golden amber, blah, 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 blah. But it does say it's a Highland single malt scotch. I, I really think, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, thoughts on Dalmore, the master taster is pretty hilarious with his tasting antics. Uh, oh, their master taster. I haven't seen any of that. I'm going to have to look into that. Um, <laughs> oh, geez, Eric's here. All right. <laughs> He's referencing a, uh, a time earlier. Um, where I, I mixed what it what was it it was it was an American American straight whiskey it was called Bully Boy and then Black Velvet which is a Canadian blended whiskey and then some Booker's which is a 130 proof bourbon um, yeah not great so okay I I really thought that I wasn't like totally crazy thank you Barry he says that they're kind of mingled I I knew that they were like next to each other but I'm gonna have to do some research on that because I feel I feel dumb not knowing the answer frankly. The Whiskey Vault likes to call it a spectrum since there are flavors that they tend to have in common. Okay. Okay. Sure. 
Um, usually when I talk about Highland scotches, I refer to them as being fruity or, or floral. Um, but frankly, I would define a lot of sp uh, space sides the same way. So I guess I never really thought about it. Hmm. <clears throat> so, <sighs> let me think. So my next, my next review will probably be on the 10 year here. Um, it just, it's kind of their baseline. Um, they've recently put out the 15, or they're going to be putting out the 15 pretty soon. And um, I'm looking forward to actually getting that, depending on price. If they really go too high on the price, I'm not confident. I might have to wait for, for some other people. But frankly, like, those newer whiskeys that come out, like, that's my personal opportunity to, to get some new subscribers and some, some new stuff. So um, that's something I would like to do. Ah, shoot, sorry. I set up hotkeys for a reason. Um, so for those who can't really tell, this is what I'm drinking right now. Space Side is a specific region and variety with the Highlands. Okay. All right, I'll take it. All right, so let me think. Do I have any good stories? I usually tell some good stories on here. Um... Although I, I may not have never saw the fifteen. Yeah, this, the fifteen is brand new. I usually have a few more drinks before I start telling good stories. Speyside is in the Highlands. Speysides don't tend to have the peat and are a bit more approachable. Yeah, but do do Highland? Uh, all right, I'm just gonna stop because I don't want to sound dumb. Because I, I was pretty sure that the Islay stuff and maybe some of the Highlands have have peat. I know the Islay stuff does, but I don't know. So, I am going to be going to a whiskey festival, actually. I think it's next weekend. Um, it's in Rhode Island, and it's going to be, I think it's called, like, the, what is it, like, the, shoot, it's at the casino there in Rhode Island. It's the Twin River Casino Whiskey Festival, uh, Whiskey Expo, New England Whiskey Expo, sorry. Um, no, I'm not mixing McKellen M. Uh, actually, you know, frankly, if I did buy a McKellen M, I might mix a little bit with Coke um, and just put it on video because I think people would kill me. Um, anyway, so I'm going to be at that whiskey tasting, and I'm going to try to do a video of that. Um, I don't know how that's going to work, because it occurred to me the other night that it's a casino, which generally doesn't allow filming, so I might have to, um, might have to figure something out. But I have, of course I don't have it with me, I got some shirts printed, which, um, small plug, like, if you, if you actually wanted to, I'm going to, don't even worry about it yet. I'm going to be making a store, because I've, I've got some fun ideas for, for t-shirts, basically. I don't want to just be like, logo, you know, although the, the shirts I do have say Whiskey Dick, D-I-C, um, so I'm kind of looking forward to wearing that, but I've got some funny ideas for, for some t-shirts that I'm going to try to make, and uh, hopefully they're they're good enough to, to actually sell. Um, not necessarily hawking it to you all, just more saying that something's coming. Um, 15 can't be brand new, gotta be, <laughs> Eric, I hate you. <laughs> uh, Scotch is very interesting, so many different styles, areas, flavors. Yeah, I gotta really educate myself before I, I really propose like a definitive scotch list. Okay. Alright, so the general consensus from the chat seems to be that Speyside and Highland, they have some differences, but not dramatic. So, that's cool. Um, makes me feel a little bit better about not noticing too much of a difference there. That being said, it is a little odd. Uh, first to say Highland, but let's move on. So, let's see, what's going on? Uh, what else is going on? So my dad's going to be at that whiskey festival with me, which I'm pretty psyched about. Um, so, for those that don't know, my name's Bill, and uh, so is his. So we're both going to just be Bill the Whiskey Dick. It's going to be kind of fun. Um, does anybody around here, is anybody here going to that Whiskey Expo? That would be uh, shocking if of the, you know, 20 people or so that are in here. Um, let's see what else. I'm sorry. Let me finish this one off so I can move on to the other whiskey. Hmm. That is a good whiskey, especially for the price. Somebody mentioned that it's moving up to about 33 bucks in their area, and I kind of hope that that doesn't stay the case, because uh, this was definitely 
this would definitely be on my list of you know easily approachable scotches. So, all right. So the one I'm doing next is the Spayburn, and I may pronounce this wrong. It's Braden Oroch. Um, couldn't tell you what that means. <laughs> I tried to figure it out. Uh, I do know that that uh, this is kind of the next logical step of the Spayburn. So um, I'm looking forward to trying this actually, as you can see from the, the bottle here. I've tried it like probably twice before, maybe only once. So I really have no idea what this tastes like. So tell me, tell me what you guys have been, uh, you know, kind of keeping your eye on lately. Like, what, what whiskey is interesting to you? What do you want to, not necessarily see me, but like, what do you want to buy? You know, when you go to the, the liquor store, what do you see that you just don't get for whatever reason? Maybe it's a hundred bucks, maybe it's four hundred dollars. Like, what, what interests you in a whiskey? What do you personally want to buy? Maybe a video series could be seeing your journey as you learn more about other types of whiskeys and the viewers could learn with you. Yeah, that's not a bad idea, Derek, actually. I mean, that's kind of kind of the gist of what I'm trying to do with, you know, explaining about these things. Although I certainly don't phrase it the way of like, hey, I knew nothing about Spayburn before I got into it and here's what I learned. Um, but I'm trying to do this as more of an educational thing. So that's a, a good idea though. I'll see if I can try to make that work. That one can be had in a nice gift box for about 22 bucks. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so let me go ahead and nose this. Hmm, well that is considerably different. Oh, interesting. All right, so Barry, Barry's, Barry's awesome first off, um, for anybody else in the chat, Barry's just the man. Uh, he says that it, Braden Oroch is uh, Gaelic for golden salmon. Um, which makes a lot of sense, actually. Let me let me see if there's any way that this is going to come out. Let's see. Yeah, you guys can see that. There's a little salmon on the cap there. Um, so that makes a lot of sense. Cool. Thanks, Barry. Bullet barrel strength. All right. Does anybody know how the heck to get that one? It's the only bullet bourbon that I don't have a video on. Um, from what I understand, you have to go to the actual bullet uh, bullet bullet distillery, but. I don't know. Um, Seventy-five price. Where are you, Stephen? Are you, are you near Kentucky? Hmm. I gotta say, I'm not a fan of the the nose on this one. It's very sharp. Um, trying to trying to think of how to how to describe this. Let me see if the uh, let me see if this has anything decent on it. All right. So it's the lemon. Um, there, it's got a pretty typical nose on it as far as some stuff, but that sharpness is coming from a lemon. So it's honey. Although, all right. So think about if you were to think about if you were to smell almost like old honey, like stale. Not it's almost like lost its sweetness, but it's just it's. I don't know how better to describe it unless you've smelled like honey that happened to be at the back of your cabinet for way too long and it like crystallized. Um, that's a little bit like this. <laughs> it's kind of weird to describe uh, if you added a little bit of uh, lemon to it. All right, let me um, let me try that. I really don't like the nose on this though. Mm, cheers. Hmm. Well, nah, not a huge fan of this one um, yet. But let me try a few more. Um, certainly more than one sip. But uh, it does not hit you. It's it, first off, it's a hundred percent different than this. Like I would believe that that was a completely different was uh, distillery and just a whole different whatever. Um, it's it's interesting how different that is. I'm gonna have to read up on this. I'm I'm actually kind of looking forward to doing the review on this just so I can learn more about it at this point. All right, let's see. Single malted uh, single malts bottled with an age statement above forty percent is something somebody's looking for. Yeah. Um, so Eric is drinking a uh, Shildag. I'm not sure how to say that. It sounds about right. Shild Shildag? Shildag, probably. Uh, 12 year Speyside Scotch, coincidentally. All right. Um, Eric was telling me earlier that, that he's been uh, drinking some, well, him and his wife, whatever, so have been drinking some red wine that has been 
aged in a bourbon, uh, no, uh, like finished in a bourbon barrel, I think is what it was, or aged in a bourbon barrel. Um, sounded really weird, but he says it kind of mellows out some of the, the flavor of the red wine, which, I mean, of course I would try it, but it sounds very odd to me. All right, let's see. I was really interested in Japanese whiskeys for a while, but the prices have skyrocketed. Yeah, it's unfortunate. And most of the time I feel there are better whiskeys out there at the same prices or even cheaper. Um, yeah, that's true. I, I've actually, I was going to do some uh, Japanese whiskey over the next month or so, uh, next couple of months. Um, but the, there's really nothing that's not overly expensive. Um, you're completely right. Uh, ben Ramak 10 is a special whiskey these days. Haven't tried that one yet. Um, I do enjoy Islay whiskey. However, a while back, I did request that if you could rate Maker's Mark cask strength. That's true. I do remember that request, actually. Um, that's something I, I'll have to keep an ear, uh, eye out for, because um, I wouldn't mind doing that either. I So... You may have noticed, so if you look at my my page, I've got like a million playlists already. Just something about the way I like to organize stuff, even if it's only had one bottle uh, ever reviewed on it, like Forty Creek, for example. I like to make a playlist around it because I like the idea of trying to fill that out with all of the whiskeys that I've already done. Um, it's definitely, it's less about the search, although it, it helps if somebody's searching for Forty Creek to find a playlist on it. But I... Uh, I would really like to be able to finish off the Maker's Mark playlist uh, with all the rest of the stuff that they normally have. All right, so what's your favorite type of whiskey? Mine is bourbon for sure. That's a good question. Man, I don't even think I can answer it, honestly. The, the whiskey I've drank the most of is bourbon, um, followed probably pretty close by scotch. I certainly know the most about bourbon and probably rye. Um, if I had to be stuck with one whiskey for the rest of my life, though, well, one type of whiskey, well, it wouldn't be Canadian. <laughs> I gotta think it's gonna be Scotch. There's there's so many different areas of Scotland, and each one kind of, uh, well, <laughs> mostly, has a unique flavor to it. And I just think that there's so much variety in Scotch, whereas bourbons are, are good, and they're consistently good, whereas Scotch, you might get, like, a real terrible-tasting Scotch, whereas you tend not to get too many terrible-tasting bourbons as long as you're not going for complete rock gut. Um, so yeah, I think I would have to go scotch. I think it would keep it interesting the longest. Uh, let's see. I do enjoy Islay whiskey, however, a while back I did. Yeah, okay, yeah. Um, Glenlivet, Nadura, yep, 16 year, had it when my cousin visited for Christmas, can't find it for less than 90. Yeah. Man, what do you guys think? Do you tend to buy any whiskeys that are over 100 bucks, or is that like a real special occasion kind of thing for you? Um... Ever since I started this channel, I definitely can can justify that a little bit more because you know, and the the channel does not make very much money first off. But like the money that it does make, I tend to put right back into the whiskey or to equipment or whatever. So like in my mind, you know, if I make some money, I can go buy another bottle of whiskey and not feel bad about it. That being said, like I still don't really buy anything that's a hundred dollars. I usually aim for you know, maybe like 40 to 80, somewhere in there I usually don't think too much about. Um, what's your favorite type of whiskey? All right, yeah. Uh, Iron 10 is a non-peated goodie. I'll have to look that one up. I do like PD whiskeys, though. Um, 90 bucks for IY Traditional a few weeks ago, and it's good, but not worth 90. I envy y'all who don't pay Canadian taxes on their whiskey. Um... Alright, kind of obsessed with Kavalon. Yeah, yeah, that's good stuff. I've tried that. Um, hey, it's Mr. Rogers. Um, when is cooking with bourbon coming? So, Mr. Rogers, i got to ask two questions. Uh, actually, a statement and then a question. Number one, thank you very much for the donation last time. It, my software was totally not working, and I didn't see it pop up until after I finished the stream, so thank you very much. Um, and number two, are you drunk? <laughs> not because you tipped me, but because... You were hammered last time, and I'm, I'm curious if you're in the same state tonight, because that will make it maybe more fun. Yeah, Barry's all about scotch, I know that. Barry's, Barry's a, a man of taste. Yeah. Uh, originally from Canada, thought the whiskey was expensive then, moved to Australia. Yeah, man. Now, Australia has their own whiskeys, though. Can Is Australian whiskey pretty expensive? I have no idea. I have a magazine on, on like the better Australian whiskeys, but I haven't personally read through it that far yet, maybe like halfway. 
Um, that being said, I don't see any of those Australian whiskeys in my area. Barry says he buys over $100 whiskeys to annoy his wife. I like, I like your motivation. Um, I have to kind of get close to $100 for good stuff. Look for our quarter cast is 85 here. Um, what did I pay for quarter cask recently? I bought it for, for another live stream I did. I want to say I paid like 65 to 70 for it. Um, been working hard to find the acceptable, inexpensive ones in each category. Yeah, that's a good, it's a good motivation, uh, Eric. It's a good goal. Special occasions with friends and family. Otherwise, I won't spend more than $40 on myself. I originally got the Nadura for 45 at Costco. Wow, good for you, Derek. Especially, like you said, your, your stuff tends to cost a bit more. Um, hey, Sean. Nice to see you. Thanks for coming. Bye. Lark rocks. Uh, Australian whiskeys are amazing, but still very expensive. All right, so here's a good question for you. What Australian whiskeys should I be keeping my eye out for? Because I do have a really nice liquor store near me uh, called Julio's Liquors, and they tend to have everything. Um, if an Australian whiskey is known to export, I would bet that if they don't have it, they could at least get it. So what is something worth trying? Because I would love to try an Australian whiskey. I mean, I'd love to try anything, really. So the taste here is still not really growing on me. Uh, I'm kind of sad about that. Let me let me try adding a little bit of water. I, I know I said I was going to probably drink a couple of each, but I might actually end up just going back to this Baber and 10. We'll see. Australian whiskeys are amazing, but still ten. Oh, Oh, one hundred and ten. I thought you said ten dollars U.S. dollars. I was uh, I was a little confused as to how that was expensive. One hundred and ten bucks. Wow, that's that's like more expensive than most Japanese whiskeys around this area. Well, some some anyway. That Yamazaki twelve that I did before, man, that stuff's good. I'll never forget that. That was such a beautiful whiskey. Have you guys all tried any any Japanese whiskeys that uh, I should put on my list? I'm curious. I'm, I'm like dying to know more about these these two. I uh, unfortunately didn't have the time to do as much research on these as I wanted today. Um, so the reason I haven't done a live stream in a while is work is once again just absolutely nuts. As you've heard me mention a few times on the channel at this point, just really really busy. I was working last night until about midnight or so, and uh, I do that probably like once a week and. It just, it makes it tough to, to do things like this and, and <laughs> frankly, to do anything fun, um, you know, between that and just typical responsibilities and whatnot, so. But, oh well. As long as I can drink whiskey on camera and, and have fun doing it, it's, it's a good motivator, even if it's only every couple months. Limburners, Sullivan's Cove, and Overeem. Uh, are the Australian whiskeys that that are being recommended. So when I go back and read, watch this in a little while, I'm going to write those down, and I'm going to make sure to have those. All right. So let's see how we're doing. Still four, 15 people. I was kind of hoping for more. I actually really went kind of above and beyond and, and tried to advertise this. I think I just did it on a bad night. I saw somebody earlier uh, recommending that Fridays and Saturdays would be better. Completely agree. I mean, Thirsty Thursday is, is fine for college, but I think a lot of people have trouble drinking on a Thursday. <laughs> and I think that's actually pretty reasonable. Um, what's my name? My name is Bill. So, And... Unless I've got a mark on my... Yeah, I do have a mark. I was actually... It looked like you had an accent above the A, and I was about to call you Mikhail, uh, but it actually was a, a dot on my screen here. Would you be willing to outsource labor? Serious question for once. Outsource labor as far as... Oh, um, for, for work. Um, we do, kind of. Like, we have offshore uh, resources, which I'm not a huge fan of using, uh, mostly because the time difference is a bit of an uh, issue. Um, but, I mean, it could it could help, but, yeah. The problem is our product is pretty, it's not, it's not very complicated in that, like, you couldn't learn it. It's just complicated in that it's big. And training somebody on it is very hard when you can only potentially talk to them for like an hour a day. 
All right. Um, Sacramento, California, huh? Hmm. So here's a, here's a question. It seems like we have a decent, de decent variety of locations here. Anybody got a local distillery that would be worth me reaching out to? Um, actually, I don't know if you remember. I think it was two live streams ago. I talked about a distillery that said that they were going to send me some whiskey made from sunflower seeds, which seemed really weird. And actually, you know, upon looking at it, it's technically not a whiskey because it's like 70% sunflower seeds. And um, anyway, they said they were going to send me free booze. And I said, sure, go for it. I don't care. And uh, never got it. So I have no problem like reaching out to local distilleries and trying to get them some exposure and frankly, get myself some, some more content. And, you know, do specials. I mean, it would be cool to, to highlight a local distillery that's actually trying to make it. I, I, I'm i going to sound sappy, but I love the American dream and all that stuff, like trying to really, like, start a small business and make it successful. So, um, I mean, I don't have, like, a million subscribers, but I've got, you know, almost 5,000 at this point. That's good enough. You know, that's certainly, certainly growing. Um, Anyway, so if you have a local distillery that you think could use some publicity, I will absolutely try to reach out to them. There's, there's one up in Maine that I've been working with a little bit uh, called the Wiggly Bridge, and they're in York, Maine, and I have a bottle of theirs right now in my cabinet. I haven't done the review on it yet, but I'm actually hoping to go to their distillery and kind of do a little tour and, you know, talk to the guy, kind of do an interview and do like a whole different thing. I know I've talked about this before. It's, it's more just the semantics of it. Semantics? Yeah, I guess. Um are hard to figure out. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, I need to get those those better microphones too. Dad's Hat Distillery is in Philadelphia. It's actually an awesome rye whiskey. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll mark that down as well. Thank you. Cool. So here's a qu another question. Who here has made their own whiskey? Uh, either whether it be, you know, those little barrels or if you're just happen to be like an actual legit distiller. I'm curious uh, if you've had any success really at either one. Koval or Few are local to me. Koval or Few, okay. St. Georgia in Almedia, Almeda, California. Their single malt whiskey is great any way you take it. All right, that's pretty encouraging. Um, I mean, all right, St. George, huh? Interesting, sounds more like a wine. <laughs> like Chateau St. Michael. Hate to say it, this one's still so not growing on me. I wonder if that's why there was only one one uh, drink taken out of this. Hmm. Barry, have you ever had this one? What's your opinion? I know, you, I know you've had everything that there is to have. Or at least I like to think so. Um says green apples, honey, lemon, and floral vanilla spices on the nose. I disagree. Um, I, I like to think that I've kind of trained my nose a bit at this point, and there's, you get the lemon and you get some of the spice, which is probably what that sharpness is, but the, the apples it, are completely lost. The honey, as I mentioned, is not a pleasant version of honey. Uh, floral, yeah, I could kind of see that, but it's, it's subtle there too. Um, it says it's a wonderfully balanced, full-bodied whiskey with a long-lasting finish. I will agree the finish is long-lasting, but that's because it's bad. <laughs> so, I don't know. All right, so let's see what else we've got. So we've got mead and cider. All right, so Tom, Tom likes to drink mead and cider. I like them both as well. I just tend not to drink too much of them. I live in Iowa. There's a place called Cedar Ridge. Um, they started out as a winery, but are now doing whiskeys. They have a bourbon, a reserve bourbon, a single malt, a malted rye, and 100% wheat. So that's pretty awesome. Excuse me. I would love to start doing wheats um, or wheaters. The, here's the problem. I do so many bourbons on this channel that I feel like I'm really kind of, what's the word? Whatever, like pigeonholing myself into bourbon. And obviously it's easier to get in the States and it's cheaper. So that's part of the reason I've done so many of them is I wanted to get a lot of content out as quickly as I could, and so I did bourbon. But I gotta do more scotch. I just gotta, I mean, this is what stuff people look for. I was looking today myself for Spayburn um, just to try to try to get some, some opinions on the stuff and try to get a little bit of knowledge that I could share on this. 
And frankly, other than Ralphie, like there really were, there were no good reviews. So I'm actually kind of hopeful that I can do a, a really good review and actually be that that video to go for, to if you're looking to learn about Spayburn. Um, have reached out to Spayburn actually myself and, and tried to be like, hey, you know, I'm trying to highlight your, your distillery. I'd like to get some information. And they were okay. They were just more like, we don't work with anybody. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So I'll give you some free advertising for nothing, but that's fine. Um, that being said, I don't know that I'm going to get a whole lot of like in detail information, but we'll see. I don't know. I'll do my usual research. I, I usually think I produce pretty good videos, so we'll, we'll see. All right. I'm kind of rambling a bit. <clears throat> four, four whiskeys or three whiskeys. We'll do that to you in less than an hour. <laughs> um, da -da -da. Very bad at... All right, so Sean Connolly says, great question, referring to the local places. Interested in the replies, did the Maker's Tour at Jameson, Maker's Tour at Jameson, uh, was very bad at blending. Okay. Uh, I got a one-gallon barrel for Christmas. If you, oh, okay, all right, this is more about the, the making your own stuff. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so I got a one-gallon barrel for Christmas a few years ago with Essence and was told to put a few liters of cheap but high-proof vodka in it didn't even get to enjoy the failure because the barrel leaked. Oh, sorry, Sean. That's really unfortunate. I um, I tried to make beer myself. Uh, actually, all right. So I tried to make beer. I totally failed, but that's not the fun story. So my brother-in-law, his name's Evan. He, um, you know those Mr. Beer kegs? Like they're, you know, this big or so and about whatever. Um, and you make maybe about 12 bottles worth of beer. And if you make it right, you know, it, it comes out fine. Um, the ones I made tended to come out, they tasted actually a little bit more like uh, Spayburn 10 than it did beer because apparently I didn't clean it well enough or, you know, whatever. I guess if it tastes like flowers or like fruit, that means that you had bacteria and you didn't do a good job cleaning it. But this is like the first time I did it, I followed it, whatever. So Evan, he had his beer um, and whatever he did, he did it wrong, <laughs> like catastrophically wrong because the barrel... Um, the spigot on the front, I believe, or, or something, but the spigot on the front came off or leaked or something, and the beer was pressurized and shot out of where the spigot was all over the ceiling because he kept it above his refrigerator, and it shot all over the ceiling. I saw the, the, the damage, so it's not like just a story. Like, this legit happened. I don't know how it happened. Just thinking about it, telling the story, that's why it's kind of a sucky story, but, like, all over the ceiling. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so I don't know. Those things, I didn't have good luck with them. He didn't have good luck with them. I'm not surprised that the, the kegs leaked. Um, but I don't know. Uh, let's see. So Barry, Barry, who's your team? Barry says uh, whiskey's good for watching football. Um, so Barry's one of my Patreon uh, supporters. So I'm a little worried that uh, what he says, I'm, I might not tell him who my team is. <laughs> <laughs> you might you might withdraw from Patreon. Um, St. George's specialty is gin, but like I said, a pretty solid whiskey. Not to derail a whiskey talk, but they're... Oh boy, I'm not going to say that right. Botanivore gin, uh, gin is a treat. Okay. Actually, gin's great. Um, I am definitely haven't taken the time to get into gin uh, to see if there's really that much variety, but I just don't know anything about it. Um, I have two different bottles. I have Beefeater and uh, Sapphire. So, I mean, I'm pretty pretty uh, boring when it comes to my gin choice. Iowa Legendary Rye is really good. Okay. Um, look for whiskey from Westland Distillery in Seattle. They just released their latest matured in, oak, in local oak. Okay, cool. Um, Derek, thank you for joining, Derek. Appreciate it. You and the commenters are awesome folks. Mahalo and aloha. So... By the way, Derek, I gotta say, it's a, I've got kids, and of course, they watch Moana, and the friggin' song in that, in that movie, oh man, they just get stuck in my head the entire day. It's awful. I'm a dude that likes, like, you know, heavy, heavy music, and getting Disney songs stuck in my head just feels wrong. All right, let's see. My dad has a few of the Mr. Kegs, bad times to the point that he wanted to UNC's uh, recipe. I don't know what that means. Um... Bad times to the point that he wanted to... Unk's recipe, maybe? I'm not sure. 
I'd be surprised if you're not a Pats fan. Of course I'm a Pats fan, Sean. <laughs> you literally can't live in this state without being a Pats fan. If you do, then, then you're probably doing it just to be argumentative. So. so, let's see. My comment was in regard to making whiskey at Jameson. They give you the blending ingredients that they use and allow you to blend your own whiskey. Okay, cool. So, speaking of distilleries or whatever. So, Maker's Mark... Um, you may know this, and actually this is, this is something I'll probably do an episode on at some point. A lot of whiskey distilleries have these like ambassador clubs. Clubs I know like Jack Daniels has one, Maker's Mark has one, a few others have them. I'm thinking I'm going to join them all and see what they're like and then kind of talk about it in a, a video. So Maker's Mark actually so far is one of the coolest. Um, so I wish I had thought to put this in here. Uh, as, a, as a thing I could switch over to, but whatever. Do you remember that commercial with Mila Kunis um, who kind of branded her own Jim Beam barrel? Um, it's kind of like that with Maker's Mark. So they have the barrel, and then they'll actually put your name on the barrel, and by the time when the barrel fully matures, they'll give you an opportunity to buy a bottle or the whole thing or whatever you want uh, from that barrel. And uh, so right now, there is a barrel sitting at Maker's Mark Distillery uh, that says the Whiskey Dick on it, which I think is just kind of hilarious. Um, I don't know. I just, I love the name that I chose for this channel. <laughs> so it's really awkward to tell people in person, though. <laughs> uh, Uncle is the name of... Okay. When you said Unks, I assumed Uncle, but whatever. I was born in uh, Cincinnati, so the Bengals are my curse to bear. I still wake up with cold sweats to we're on this. Yep, yeah. uh, we're on to Cincinnati. Okay, I uh, want to bring up again the thought of a Kentucky tour with as many of your viewers who would like to join. Best in uh, spring or fall, still close in the summer, too hot. Think there is any interest? So Barry, one thing that that I definitely want to do, and and I know that some things are in um, the works. Um, there's this other group of people who do live streams actually that so it's scotch for dummies and they're the ones i did the live stream on i don't know a few like probably a month and a half ago and um they have been trying to get a group of people to go and do a whiskey tour just like a bunch of youtubers basically and uh i think it's like legit going to happen and and i'm hoping it does because it sounds awesome i would love to do that um Thanks, Stevenson. That being said, if it ever does happen, I will absolutely extend some some invitations out to some of my uh, some of my viewers here, or just really to anybody who wants to show up, because um, it'd be pretty fun to film film like that. I got to get my my stuff together as far as uh, videography and microphones and whatnot before I really get that done. But I don't see any reason I can't do that in the spring. My wife's already told me it's cool, so I mean that's really the only permission I need. Man, that's really just not very good. I'm shocked. I'm really shocked. I really was very hopeful for that. I'm, I'm bummed. All right. Well, I'm going to pour one more glass of the Spayburn 10. Because... <laughs> Thanks, Spoonman. Um, I'm actually a little bit... Uh, I'm kind of looking forward to walking around that... that I was at the Whiskey Expo wearing the Whiskey Dick shirt. I'm like, I'm psyched to do that because, all right, here's, I've now had enough drinks. It's story time. <laughs> so um, this is actually kind of along the same lines. When I was in high school, uh, as many of you probably have, we did a senior parade, which for those that don't know, basically it's all the seniors get in their cars and you drive over usually to like your rival's school and you maybe like drive around the school, honk your horn, be obnoxious and just kind of, you know, be, be teenagers, but in a fun way. So my college had their, uh, <laughs> we had our senior parade day kind of planned and something happened where the principal and our vice principal or whatever found out about it and they basically said over the intercom, anybody who's caught leaving to go do this will get like a three-day suspension or something so excuse me <clears throat> so i'm sorry I'm la you'll you'll see why i'm laughing while i'm telling this all right so everybody bailed basically and i said to myself like i'm not bailing like i'm not going to go over to the other people but i want to do something and the reason i was so driven to do something is because 
I had a convertible at the time. But more importantly, I had gone to the local porn store and I had bought a six foot inflatable penis called Captain Pecker the Party Wrecker. <laughs> and this thing was awesome. Um, man, I wish I knew I had done this because I would have absolutely put a picture up here. But Captain Pecker the Party Wrecker was, it, it, it was as big as I, I mean, it was as long as I am tall, like, and I'm huge. And this thing, I had it half inflated in the convertible. And when me and like six of my friends all kind of loaded into this thing, uh, we finished inflating it. And three of them are standing in the back of my convertible, holding it above their heads. And I decided to just drive around my school a few times. And as we were doing this, it was like out of a movie. You know, people were getting out of their seats because we had these big, huge windows in each classroom. People were getting out of their seats, running over the windows, like plastered against it, just trying to see as I'm driving very slowly in my convertible with this gigantic piece <laughs> just out the window and uh, or out the, out the top. And... Um, I ended up going around the school twice, and on my second time, as I was actually about to finish and go, go, uh, you know, park, the I think it was the vice principal comes out and he's just like, "What the hell are you doing?" <laughs> and I'm just like, "What? I'm just you know driving around the school, not a big deal." And so he walks over, he grabs Captain Pecker, and uh, stabs it with a pen, and the whole thing just <laughs> deflates, much like a whiskey dick, and <laughs> just gone. You know, he throws in the trash. That was over. I didn't get in any real trouble. He basically was just like, I'm sure this thing cost you some money. We'll just call it even. Like, go home, come back tomorrow. And I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> so, yeah, Captain Pecker, the party wrecker. Good stuff. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Man, just thinking about it, like, uh, hold on, all right. Well, I'm, you don't have to hold on. I'm going to do this while I'm talking, but I just got to see if I can find this thing because you need to see it. Uh, Pecker the Party Wrecker. I'm really going to be surprised because I'm 34 now. I bought this thing when I was 18. Oh, it's, yeah, that's close. Let's see if I can find an image of it. Um, <laughs> all right, this is good enough. This is very close. All right, so let's do this. Give me 10 more seconds here. I promise it's worth it. All right. I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to name this thing. It needs a, like an object name. All right. Do, do, do. Kind of hope I don't end up leaving this thing on my desktop because people are going to. There it is. All right, so can you all see that? I hope you can see that. That lady's riding Captain Pecker the party wrecker. <laughs> yeah, look at that. All right. So anyway, that's that's uh, that's what I was driving around with in my car. <laughs> All right. So I don't think I'm going to top that. I had uh, told myself I was going to try to keep this live stream to about an hour or so. So um, I think I'm going to gonna finish this glass of whiskey you now maybe I'll take the next five minutes or so and just kind of hang out but um yeah good stuff <laughs> you were invited to all my parties <laughs> thanks Barry <laughs> uh Captain Pecker the party wrecker is my next high ABV homebrew name I like that send me a bottle Steve <laughs> stop doing it. all right um so I David I do actually have both Knob Creek and Four Roses um I think it's the small batch. Uh, actually, my wife got me, she got it for me for our anniversary. So this, this is great. I, I hope I haven't told this story before. Um, so for our anniversary, it's our fourth year, um, the, the theme, I guess you'd call it, is um, fruit and flowers. So for her, I think I got her, I got her an apple something or other, um, you know, just some whatever piece of gear and uh but she got me a four roses uh single uh was a small batch and she got me this like apple cider whiskey which you know it's it's apple cider whiskey it's not something i'll do a review on here because it's flavored whatever but i mean it's actually not terrible um at all but the the four roses is really where it's at but i thought that was like super clever it's just fruit and flowers so anyway um you can get bullet barrel strength for 59.99 from city wine cellar 
Okay, Steven, thank you very much. I will absolutely look that up probably right after I get off the live stream because I, I need to buy that bar uh, bottle. It kills me that I don't have that on my channel. Um, <laughs> all right, so let's see what else is up. All right, so if you, like, I'm going to finish this whole thing off with, with two points. Number one, if you didn't hear before, there's a little icon here. Um, if you hover over on a desktop or a mobile phone and it has a little poll that will um, ask you kind of like what you want to see. Um, there's like a few different options in there. If you want to, fill it out. If not, then don't worry about it. I'm just going to probably, I'll probably go with whatever, you know, gets the most votes either within the next month or so. Um, but I've got a million other ideas too. Um, all right, so that's one thing. The other question is, uh, let's, let's put a cap on this of $100. What would be the whiskey that you want to see me review the most under $100? And I'm going to sip my whiskey while I wait for some responses, because I would imagine this one will get some. Um, I would love to be able to give you guys what you want, rather than just what I think you want, which I can tell you, you don't want this. <laughs> so... Captain! <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting rid of that. I don't even want to see that next time I bring this up. All right. Uh, thanks, Stephen. <laughs> Stephen says he's going to email me tomorrow in case I forget, which I totally will. All right. Uh, perhaps you can... Uh, I'll email you... Doo -doo -doo. Perhaps you can also rate and review Laphroaig in the near future. Always a pleasure, and thank you. Yeah, I, uh, I have the Laphroaig quarter cask, and I'm planning on doing a review on that really soon. Um, Lafroig is like a huge undertaking, so I'd like to kind of go with the theme I was mentioning earlier of doing like a single distillery every month and then, you know, maybe filling out some of the other stuff as I go along. But Lafroig in itself, like, I mean, there's there's probably like seven different whiskeys that are affordable, not even until you get to like the ridiculous amounts that they cost, but like that would take me a couple of months. So I think I need to spread that out a bit. Um, uh, I'll give you a hint though, every one of them tastes like smoke, <laughs> so, oh man, I do need some, t I need some t-shirts with Captain Pecker on the back is what I'm being told, <laughs> so actually I was thinking about making t-shirts that said something, I haven't thought this out well enough, but I'm sure you've all seen the whole uh, Jack Daniels not being a bourbon thing, uh, that's been a big deal lately, um, something with that, to that effect, you know, like, like Jack Daniels is a bourbon, or or something. I'd find a way to make it funny, um, but I would I would like to wear a shirt like that. Problem is there really aren't that many like whiskey events uh, in my area. Even even with I would say that we probably have more so than a lot of areas, and there still aren't that many. So it's not many people, uh, not many places I can wear a shirt like that. Anything I lay. Okay. All right. I'll keep that in mind. I will absolutely do an I lay really soon. Actually, I have one sitting in my uh, in my cabinet that I've been waiting to get to. Uh, McClelland. Uh, actually, have any of you tried McClelland? I haven't had it in a while, so I don't remember anything about it. I think I bought it specifically because it said Islay on the on the thing, um, on the box. When I originally started this channel, I bought, I think it was like $300 worth of whiskeys, but that got me 13 whiskeys. So I bought fairly cheap ones. Um, these were two of them, and uh, it's... You know, I don't remember anything about McClelland. I don't even know if it's open, so. <clears throat> Glenn Grant, 17. All right. Glenn Grant. Glenn Grant. Let me look that one up. It would be cool to have, a like, an editor um, to do this stuff while I'm talking. I don't know, some of the bigger channels, that must be a really cool feature to have somebody just kind of look the stuff up and throw it up on the, the screen while you're chatting about it. Oh, you know what I saw today, actually, that I totally want to tell you guys about? Um, Maltman? Is that Maltman, uh, Barry? Glenn Grant, 17. Wow, that was 1995. Jeez. No, that wouldn't have been 95. Because 17 years ago would be 2000. Um, anyway, so, all right, let me, let me bring this up. This is also cool. Um, so there's a dude that, Mark, Mark Gilles, Gillespie? I don't know. He's a guy on Twitter. He does a podcast for whiskey called Whiskey Cask, uh, Cast. And, um, he mentioned earlier 
that there is a whiskey, and I'm bringing it up here, so give me, bear with me, please. Um, <clears throat> I will probably get faster at this, too, so. It would be <laughs> All right, sorry, Captain Peck of the Party Wrecker is like sitting literally on my desktop, and I just keep seeing it every time I'm browsing around here. Um, all right, so this is, and I'm purposely being vague because I want you to all see this because the box is really cool looking. Um, save. It's a desktop. Yeah. Sorry, this is, I don't know why this isn't working. DR. Is it not? I wish I could just like share my share my screen. Um, I don't think I can though. Two more seconds, I promise. <laughs> that, this is totally going to be worth it. Um, such a cool looking bottle. So it's called Winter Storm, and it's by Glenn Fittich. It's a 21 year old um, 21 year old whiskey that's finished in. There it is. All right, finally. I'm not going to bother removing the background because that will take longer. Um, so check that out. That looks freaking awesome, doesn't it? So that is um, Winter Storm, and it's called, it says, what does he say? It was finished in Canadian ice wine casks, which sounds freaking awesome. I, uh, I kind of want to, like, get that, like, really bad. Um, I don't know what the heck that would cost though, but I bet it would be pretty expensive. I have Eagle Rare in my cabinet as well, and I definitely want to do that as well. I, I did that on the bourbon, um, definitive bourbon list. That was one of them that made it. Elijah Craig really probably should have, um, been in place of the Four Roses yellow label. Um, that being said, the Four Roses probably should have, I should have just put more on the list, really. I didn't do, like, a top ten or anything, which was a dumb idea on my part. I think I got to nine. Um, I just didn't... Here's the problem. Saying top ten anything gets you a ton of views. Um, people look for that. You know, they, they literally search top ten bourbons. And um, it just... I don't know. Like, there's a little part of me that doesn't want to be that clickbait guy, but I realize I probably should be because I'll get a lot more viewers. I don't know. It's a it's a personal struggle. Like I kind of think to myself, like, am I doing this for me or am I doing this for subscribers or am I doing it for both? Like, I probably should do it for both. Um, I don't know. Whatever. Existential crisis here. <laughs> um, well, Ed Ed Manning, if you want to, there are some some uh, logo uh, T-shirts available. Um, check the description in any of my videos. You'll see uh, there's a there's a T-shirt thing. It's called like Teespring or something, and you can buy it. Um, but to be honest, like although I would love if you'd buy something, give it another few weeks because, as I was saying, I, I think I'm going to put up some new stuff. I just have to make the art, and I have to make the, the, the ideas. Um, but I would like to do just like a full, maybe like five or six different T-shirts that are good um, and actually produce some like really nice stuff that's not just a logo. All right. By the way, one thing I love is that the last time I did one of these these live streams, um, I, I forget who it was, but somebody referred to my fans as dickheads, which I laugh about every time I think about it. <laughs> I just, uh, even if you don't want to be called it, I'm totally calling you all that. <laughs> so, all right. Um, I think I'm done. I'm going to go break down all my gear here and then go sit on the couch and finish off this glass of whiskey. So thank you all for joining the live stream. I know this has probably been a bit more low-key than some of the other ones. Um, it's been a little while, though. So uh, I will try to do, I will do one of these at least.